episode 56 of The Beardcaster. My name is Scott Sakura, and I am The Beardcaster. Welcome to a podcast all about beards and mustaches, beard culture, and all the fun stuff that goes along with it. Hear the stories from the people and learn the tricks of the trade on how to grow and maintain your style with advice taken from our personal experiences. It's about the facial hair lifestyle we live and our daily lives in the world around us and how we deal with life. So please join me as I share the stories about these people and hear how they are using their facial hair to do great and fun things. Scott Sakura, the Beardcaster, how you doing? Welcome to the Beardcaster podcast. You can find out more information by going to thebeardcaster.com. You can subscribe via any of the podcatcher apps out there. I and Apple Podcasts. I guess what? Drum roll. Brrr, Spotify. Hey, if you have Spotify, you can find the Beardcaster on there. That's pretty awesome. I'm also on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and a couple other fun ones. So make sure you check out thebeardcaster.com. You can get linked up to all my social media there as well. And if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or want to say hi, you can email me, scott at thebeardcaster.com. Now, let's get into today's super awesome episode, which was was going to be a really awesome one until this guy, as I pointed myself, really screwed the pooch on this one. So, I don't know if you'd remember in the last episode, episode 54, I had discussed about how we were doing a Toys for Tots fun drive in Boardman, Ohio with the Steel City Beard and Mustache Club and the Rust Belt Whisker Society and Beards of the Old Northwest. And we were all getting together to uh, collect toys for Toys for Tots. And the Marines were supposed to come out. And it was going to be a great time. And it all did happen. And the night before, in fact, was even a stellar event. More than I had anticipated. And I had uh, set up an additional Toys for Tots toy drop-off in my small town of Chardon, Ohio in hopes that I could collect a few extra toys that I could take with me the next day to Boardman for our our gathering of the clubs and gathering of toys for the Toys for Tots uh, thing. So I go out on Friday night at um, a local establishment called Juiced. It was a, it's a smoothie bar, and uh, they make some really great smoothies there, but I will rave about their buffalo chicken wrap. It is by far one of the best ones. Make sure you get it grilled. But I want to thank Glenn and Amanda for letting me come in there and uh, utilize your parking lot and your your area in there for me to come in and collect uh, toys. And what I had anticipated was it was going to be a, you know, just a low key evening. A few people might stop by. I might collect, a, you know, 20, 30 toys. Well, at the end of the evening, I could barely shut the back door of my car because so many toys had been donated. It is unreal. So, but I will put a picture in uh, the show notes for this so you can see how much stuff I collected. I'm, I'm just very proud and I'm very thankful to all the great people that showed up and donated all these toys to Toys for Tots. And I, I don't even know what to say other than thank you. I'm just really stunned. I'm really just shocked. And it made me feel so good that I have a lot of great people in my community that are willing to help out other people that need. So I'm thankful for that. So we loaded the car up and went went home that night. And the next day I got up, I had to take the child to basketball. And uh, so on my way back, my brakes went out of my car full of toys. And I ended up getting it home. And it just kind of sucked because I'm like, oh, great. Now I'm going to have to, you know, unload all these toys. So I unloaded all these toys out of my car. I rebagged everything, took some pictures, and I had to borrow mom and dad's car, which is real, real cool and all. But, hey, I'm very thankful to them for letting me borrow their their car and uh, take it down to Boardman, Ohio, where we met up with all these other clubs. And I don't know if I had mentioned it before, but the first year we had done this, this is our third year, but the first year we had done this specific event, uh, I believe the Marines were late and we had to wait around for them. So that kind of sucked. And, but we still, I mean, it was still good. I mean, we got a lot of toys. A lot of people came out 
And then the second year, which was last year, you know, we had it all a sanctioned Toys for Tots event, all all good and everything. And so we were sitting around waiting and waiting and waiting, and they never showed up. No, I think they came about a week later to pick the toys up. So that was really disheartening. So uh, this year I applied for the uh, event and I got an email back that says you're all cool and everything. So I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I'm like, I was figuring that was all I was going to have to do. They were going to give me a call or whatever, email me, let me know what was going on. Did not hear a peep out of them. So I'm like all nervous. I'm going, great. They're not going to show up again. And I was kind of walking into the bowling alley with all these toys going, you know, this is going to really kind of stink if they don't show up. Well, to my surprise, as I walked in, we had a Marine there and a, a Naval guy, two guys. They were all in their uniforms. They looked really good. And they had a huge table full of toys and they had a couple big boxes already full of toys. So that was a real great surprise for me. And it was, it made me very happy to, to see them there. And, as the night went on, I talked to the two gentlemen and, you know, both of them were like, you know what, this was such a fun time. You know, we're going to make sure that we sign up for this assignment again next year because you guys are just really great. You really helped us out. You know, the, the toy pickup for the Youngstown Warren area was really below where they were expecting it to be for this year. And, you know, they were a little nervous and, but he goes, after we came and picked up the toys from what you, all you bearded guys have collected, you know, we're really confident that this is going to be a really good year for the kids. So that made me feel good too, that, you know, our three clubs who, well, two of the clubs being from two major cities that weren't even, you know, in the Youngstown Warren area, one from Cleveland, one from Pittsburgh had all these people that came together in this area and brought toys. So it, it just made me feel good that we could bring people from two different states or one different state and get enough, you know, toys to, you know, to reach a quota that you know, what the Marines are looking for every year. So that made me really happy too. And so I was so happy. I'm like, I'm going to get my recorder out and I'm going to start interviewing people. So I sure as heck did that. I got my recorder out. I plugged my microphone into it, shoved my recorder in my back pocket, draped my cable over my neck, and I started going around talking to people with my microphone. And boy, oh boy, did I get some really, really good stuff. And on my little crew of bowlers that I was with, we had so much fun. We had so many laughs. It was it was such a good time. Poor Karen. Not that anyone's going to know who Karen is, but the, the people that I bowled with are probably laughing their asses off right now that I bring Karen up. So Karen's going to be a fun inside joke that's going to be dropped every now and then on the podcast just for shits and giggles and to make myself laugh. But oh, we made some really fun stories up about Karen. And then I went around and I talked to a couple people that had been to the past three events. And we talked about, you know, some fun times that we had at the other bowling events and collecting toys and and just some other assorted things. And, you know, then I went and talked to a couple other people. It just, it was a really nice night. I was really getting a good vibe. From, uh, pardon me. I was really getting a good vibe from everyone, kind of just talking about the fun stuff that we've been doing for the past couple of years and how we really enjoy getting together as this group every year just to kind of celebrate the, the beard clubs and the things we do and just to, just to get together as friends in a social manner, whereas we're not going to a, a contest where you're busy the whole night walking around, you know, you're kind of mingling, but you have to be places and it, just making it a nice social gathering, which is something that we're all not used to because it's always some sort of event we're going to. So well, everyone was pretty much agreeing with that, that that's what they really loved about these bowling things that we do every year. And we plan on continuing them every year. And thank you to everyone that came out which it was just every year it's more people. We had to add more lanes, which it made everyone happy too. So, you know, the bowling alley loves having us, um, uh, Camelot lanes, Boardman, Ohio. If you want us to look that up, I'll try to put a link to the show notes on that. But, uh, so we took some pictures. The Marines were just really great. I sat and I interviewed those guys for a while and they had such great stories and it was just, just really nice to hear these two guys talk about, you know, their, their history with well, the one with the Marines and the other with the Navy and his career path of being a Navy doctor, helping out the Marines and how th that was his doorway to get into the Marines. 
And it was, these guys were just really great, real nice guys. And so then after that, we decided, well, we had planned on going to Susie's Dogs and Drafts, which is, if anyone's listened to past episodes, we've done, I've met people at the different locations in the Youngstown Boardman area and conducted a few different interviews. But uh, we went to the Boardman store, which is where we had our after party last year. We went there to get some hot dogs and stuff and just real relaxed night and everyone's eating hot dogs and tater tots and stuff. And so I'm going around interviewing people again, you know, getting that mic in their face, talking to them, blah, blah, blah. And I get this cute little girl, Zayo, who belongs to Rocky and Rachel. And she just like, as soon as she saw that microphone, it was like her best friend. And she just, all she wanted to do was talk into it. So, oh, just the fun things that she was saying and just the really horrible things she was saying about other bearding people out there. I can't really... I, I told Aaron Johnston I wouldn't repeat what she said about her, or him, but uh, I told him, and he, he kind of hurt his feelings, but I'm not going to share it with everyone else. But uh, so I, I just I got so much great, great stuff on tape, and so I was like, all I could, I could not wait to get home and check it out. So I bolted out of there, my hour-long drive. I get home. I plug, I take the card out of my thing. I plug it into my computer, and I hit play. And all I hear is this and this muffled sound of bowling going on in the background. And I'm like, hmm. I start scrolling through it and I'm like, I can barely hear anyone talking. It's just like all I hear is bowling and I can't hear anyone talking. And I can, you could kind of hear people talking way off in the far distance. So I'm like going through and I'm like, I can't even recognize like what part of the evening this is. I can just hear people laughing. I can hear bowling. I and I hear people talking, but I can't make anything out. And it's just all really muffled and stuff. And I'm like, oh, God. So I go to the next track, which is when we were at Susie's Dogs in all hopes that, oh, my God, hopefully this turned out because there was some gold that at, at, at Susie's. So I start scrolling through this track, and I'm going, oh, shit. Oh, my God. And I'm like, nothing turned out. I could not believe it. I'm like sitting there like with my, my, my head in my hands going, what the heck happened? So I go to my bag and I pick up my recorder as I'm looking at it right now. I'm showing it to you in the microphone because I'm really expecting that you can envision this. But my little recorder, if you look at it from the front, looks exactly the same as it does in the back when it's dark. It's, it, it's the same. And on one side, there is a line out for your headphones. And on the other side is a line in for your external microphone. Well, this dumbass plugged microphone into line out for headphone. So therefore, my microphone was not working the whole entire, a whole entire night. And the microphone on my recorder was working. So as I shoved it into my back pocket, it was getting some really good footage of my ass bowling and everyone else going in the background so i pretty much got two hours of my back pocket at a bowling event and eating hot dogs so you can thank this guy for giving you some really great content tonight so i really feel really stupid for that and i i so i, I apologize number one i apologize to the the people that i interviewed and the really great things that they said and my wonderful memory that I have. I don't remember shit. So I can't even like be like, well, I talked to so-and-so about this and that. And oh, the uh, Marine I talked to, his name was blah, blah, blah. And the, the Naval guy I talked to, his name was, I know his last name, I think was Lee. But uh, I, you know, I, I feel horrible that I don't remember who I talked to and what I talked to them about and what they said. So I just pretty much gave you a quick summation of my evening and how I really effed up and the content that you were supposed to be hearing tonight is pretty much worthless. So I, I'm sorry. That's, and, and this is, you know, this is going to be my fun Christmas episode and it was all going to be about giving toys to the children and yeah, well, and, and it was going to be such a great story, but it, the story is a different story for, and, and the thing is, is I, I was mad, but then I was like, you know what? It happened, and I'm going to learn from this again. <laughs> and that leads me to where the next part of this episode is going to go. Now, I had 
I, I've recorded lots and lots and lots of stuff throughout the year. And some of it just gets buried in my recorder. So next thing I'm looking at my recorder after I see that I'm looking through all these files and I'm like, hmm, I wonder what this one is. And I start listening to it and I'm like, oh, I don't even remember recording that. And then I, I start going through other files and I'm like, oh, gee, um, I totally remember doing this, but I don't remember anything about it. So I start listening. And then I come to this specific interview that I'm going to be playing right now, which is quite funny. And I remember doing it, but as I named the file Drunken Quinn, and it was an interview I did with Patrick Quinn, and there were some guest appearances by some other fun people in there. But uh, if you don't know who uh, Patrick Quinn is, he is number two in the world for Sideburns Natural, and I believe he is part of the RVA Beard League. And we, we hit it off down in... In Austin, in Austin, we were at the same hotel, the Super 8, and we just spent we spent quite a bit of time just hanging out and talking, and and I believe it was the last night we you know drank a little bit and got tipsy. I had my In and Out burger, and uh, so we thought it would be fun to hey let's start recording some stuff. And so lo and behold, I take my recorder out, I plug my microphone into it, and I believe Patrick said, "Do you have that thing plugged into the right?" hole <laughs> and lo and behold i did not so we take it back to i really did not learn my lesson from a few months ago about plugging my microphone under the proper hole in my recorder so i was lucky enough to be able to switch it real quick and get this little ditty you're about to hear so i hope you enjoy this drunken babble with myself and patrick quinn and we have buffalo bittner uh, making an appearance, which you may know him as Jeff Bittner, but he is number two in the world for Imperial Mustache. And we also have another guest appearance by one of my most favorite Whiskerinas, Crystal Davis, who is also a number seven, along with myself, uh, in the creative beard category. Um, I am proud to say, though, that there is not an Aaron Johnston in this in this version uh, I edited him out completely because he had already, his head was already big enough from being number one in the uh, natural goatee category. So I didn't feel that he needed to have any more promotion for being as awesome as he is. And I hope you know, buddy, I'm just kidding. I love you very much and I can't wait to see you next month. But we're going to just go right into this. This is uh, an unexpected episode and not exactly what I had planned, but in a way, it is kind of a fun little gift to you as it's some funny little stuff that we happened while we were done in Austin. So I hope you all enjoy this and uh, I'll catch you on the backside and action. Holy fuck. That was the most difficult thing I've had to do all night long was try to plug this damn microphone in to and talk. You were just telling me you've been to an in and out and couldn't get that in. No, I, my first in and out experience as we continue the saga of the in and out burger of Scott Sakura, who's never had a fucking In N Out burger before. And it apparently is the biggest news around the Super 8 tonight. Overrated. <laughs> Overrated. I thought it was fucking good. The water burger is so much better. What is it made out of water? Uh, why why is why is it better? It's it's just uh it's a bigger patty for one. And you just get all the good toppings, man. It's just really good. It's one of the I don't better. Know. I gave I gave Brad Jackson ten dollars. I said, "Get me in and out. You tell me what I need to have." Do you think he steered me wrong? Well, yeah. I just well, he's Brad me. Jackson, so what? You know. Well, yeah, <laughs> Mister Ass, uh, no ass. <laughs> no ass. Yeah, he's got no ass. Oh, I never noticed that. <laughs> well, did you, you t- yeah, you did. You didn't see it because it's not well, you, there. Oh, yeah, you never saw it. Let's look through the window. Look. No, you gotta roll over. Yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna tell him I'll roll over. We got okay. Oh my lord. Roll over, no ass. No ass. Okay. No. Hey, Brad. Brad. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Uh oh. This is a game of Brad versus Brad because Turn we have around. a lot of similarities. Turn around. No oh, ass. Look. No ass. Okay, so apparently, if your name is Brad, you have no ass. Is that right for, right for two? You ready for this? Ready for this? 
the difference between me and Brad is really very, very weird. Brad was born on July 25th at 7 o'clock in the morning, and I was born July 26th at 7 p.m. Um, same year. <laughs> wow, okay. 36 hours difference between me and Brad. I only know Brad about a year. So, what do we derive from this? Brads have no asses. So There's three Brads I know that don't have asses. What's the third one? Bradford. Oh, yeah, oh from the Beer Barons? Yeah. He's got no ass. He's got no ass. They've paid, they, they, they have taken pictures together, and they're like, no ass. I think it, but I tell you what, as I look at, as I know. You are the trifecta now. But as I know Brad from Cincinnati. And I and I see the other two brads. I think it goes from the butt and goes into the gut. <laughs> it's like a it's like a reverse butt. Yeah. <coughs> what are you gonna do? Are you gonna start doing setups? I used to weigh about three hundred and thirty pounds, and I weigh about two sixty five. So you're in the process of losing the weight right yeah. now. Well, that's awesome. So what's your secret? Uh, half portion meals. He shares everything with me. Oh. That's how I lost one hundred and forty pounds. Jeez. Oh, so now you're going to tell me secrets now. So I interview you earlier, and you I... You asked me about that. You just asked about how I've been and that was you good. Did, you just asked about, like, my ankle and how I got into bearding. You asked me, like, how'd you lose 160 pounds? I didn't realize you were 160 pounds heavier. I was, I, I was like, 380, 400 pounds. Three... <laughs> Wait, 340, 100 pounds? No, it's 380, 400. 380, 400 pounds. That's you heard her. Record. Guinness is here. You know? I know. Guinness is here. That, that would have been a record. For 400 pounds? 380, 400 pounds. You guys are being ridiculous. No, you were the, the You said it. It's on she It's on the record. 382, 400 pounds. She forgot oh, the two. two. So the 380, 200, 400 pounds. It's, it's a recorded. really fucking big. Recorded. I know. She's like, so where's the comma at in this whole shit? That would that would be like this whole pool. That would be probably the whole. pool. I was really really fucking fat. That's not nice. <laughs> I'm just saying. I really liked food. I still really like right. food. I just You're eat it in less portions. You eat half of that food now. Exactly. Well, I eat like a fourth of that. Now. When I was in the ICU. That out. stands for intensive care unit. That's right. After I got out of the ICU, I just had no appetite. And so I didn't. Or some might call that ape tit. What? I had no ape tit. So <laughs> I just didn't eat as much. And so Brad started sharing meals with me because I felt bad for wasting so much food. So, so it's worked for both of you. Yeah. And then he, we both ended up losing a bunch of weight. So you guys feel good? Yeah. Much blood better. Pressure's gone way down. That's what we were talking about, blood pressure. That's a key. Like, I go to the doctor now, and the doctor doesn't go, um, we need to have a talk. Now it's like, hey, your blood pressure looks really good. <laughs> it's much better. I don't hear very many doctors laughing. Uh, I mean, I do, usually when we're... But you're not a doctor, you're a nurse. I, I hear doctors laughing. And you stayed at a, a, a Hotel Express last night, too, right? I stayed here last night. Oh, fucking yes. Super 8. I forgot. <laughs> no, there was a night I heard you were not here. There was a night I was not here, but that's not something we're going to talk about. Oh, she, she runs. Run, she darts away. That was like I know it happened 16 years ago. I say I, nothing happened that night except for that Crystal's drunk I, ass I need it opened. Fucking that's my problem. The fuck you know, out. I, to that. I didn't want to ask. Nothing happened. I'm a good I didn't girl. want to ask the yeah. number two man I'm in the a world. Good girl. Nothing happened. I'm not like no, that. number two man in the world. Like let's talk about this right now. All right. Let's let's we're gonna move away from the party because I want to hear the true thoughts of the number two man in the world with chops. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch what unfolded today because of all the. Th- Fun things that are going on backstage and everything, and you guys were a category or two. You're gonna go try to find In and Out Burger. It's down the street. Give Brad Jackson ten bucks. He'll give you a burger. I don't want nasty In and Out. I don't have the shits later. Whoa, whoa, why would we 
Oh, wait a minute. So, wait. Time out. I'm going to get the shits later? Oh, fuck. Told you. I didn't know. So, I need to go with the other burger joint. Okay. So, I'm drinking beers right now with... Patrick Quinn. What's your middle name? Calorie. Cal- like, as in, like, Calorie? Calgary? C-A-L-L-R-E-R-Y. No, that was wrong. C-A-L-L-E-R-Y. Hello. This guy cannot eat, spell his own middle name. Well, My middle name's Carlisle, and I have a hard time spelling it. Well, I was just drinking, so. Now, what, okay, now we're going to just take it back it's one step. Name. Well, mine is too, but where did, what's the derivation of it? It was like a great-grandmother or something like that. That's what her last name was, and... My parents just decided to use that as my middle name. Very interesting. I, I've never even heard of that. It's I like used to have a dentist. His last name was Calorie. Spelled the same way. Okay. So not let, related. You weren't? No. So it's okay if you guys had sex then. No, he was a doctor. Oh, it was a man. Oh, all right. And, and we and you don't swing that way, so that's all right. That's all right. Nope. Nope. Okay, today, 2017 World Beard and Mustache Championship, Austin, Texas, chops category. What were your feelings about the outcome today? I, let's be honest. Oh, I'm, I'm happy. I, I was happy about Mike uh, Michael winning uh, first place. Uh, it was a tough category. He talks weird. Well, he's English, so. I didn't know that. <laughs> Well, he just thought he talked weird. Of a, I'll have to admit, he's a little bit of a cunt. No. <laughs> with a K he, or a C? Uh, with a C. Oh, okay. But he's a good he's a good cunt. And uh, yeah, and Stephen Casper placed third. Uh, it was a tough category. The three of us. Uh, I could have gone anyway, honestly. Um, and uh, I'm 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 ecstatic to be a world champion in second place and have a belt buckle on my. See, if I were you, I'd be going out. I'd be going to uh, getting out business cards saying number two man of the world. Yeah, I, you know, I don't want to be, you know, right away, you know. That could get you free lunches at some restaurants. That could, you know. You, you have to think ahead of the curve there. I try. I try. I've got a couple ideas, you know. Oh, give me one. Well, I'm going to contact my local newspaper. That is absolutely true. That's what you need to do. As soon as you as soon as you get home, you're like, you gotta call that local paper and be like, hey, guess who lives in this town? The number two in the world. Yep. How do you think they're gonna react to it? How do you think your town is gonna react to having the number two best chops in the world living in their town? Do you think they might riot? Uh I think they probably won't give a fuck. <laughs> Come on now. See, now I don't like this attitude you're having right now. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, even if I was placed first, I still don't I still think they would say, well, that's nice. You know. There it's a redneck town. It's you know, it's a country town, that kind of thing. So I just don't think they'll care. Where do you live? Tell us where you tell us about where you live. Well, I live in I I live in Powhatan, Virginia, which is a outskirts of Richmond, Virginia. So I usually don't tell people all that. Because it's just too much wording. And then I have to explain where Palatan is. And it's like, oh, it's west of Richmond and blah, blah, blah. But to me, you need to explain where Virginia is at. It's in the East Coast where all the great things are. So. Trouble's walking by this right now. Number one right here. Yeah, well, number one just keeps, number one keeps walking. We'll talk to you later. Yeah, you will. <laughs> Number one in the world with the the Fu Manchu, Sean Rager. This he's a good dude. Now, okay, so the small town you live in this s- state of Virginia. Okay, I new to me. Never been there before. Even though I do have some f- very good friends who live in Richmond, they go by the name of. Roberts, Robert. yes, uh, Chad and Ami. They, Chad, yeah, yes, that's it. Yes, I. 
I'm not so good at reading sometimes. But yes, Chad and Amy Roberts. And Amy is a champion this weekend. Yes, she so, plays first, and we're all very proud of her. I'm so I I I think I'm more excited about all the people that I'm have become friends with winning. Like I, like especially for you. Like I'm just like I come down here. I, we've met before, but like we've really bonded this weekend and like, you're fucking just amazing. You're, I just want to hug you right now, but I'm not going to because okay. let's do a side hug. Okay, side side hug. hug. It doesn't, it doesn't really work. shut up. God, she's just pushy, pushy women, pushy, but I've made so many great new friends down here this year. And I can now say I'm friends with the number two chops in the world. Yes. That might get me something more in my town than yours. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'm going to call my local paper and be like, local man is good friends with man who won second and chops at world in Austin. I could, that, that's a big headline. Okay. So let's, let's, let's deep dive back here. What club do you belong to? You told us where you live. What got you inspired to do this? Well, that's a loaded question. You got a lot of you got a lot of question there. Uh, I know. Well, you I'm could the RVA Beard League. I've uh, been a member for over sixteen years. No, uh, uh, four and a half years to five. Uh, Forty-five years. No, five, about five. Four, five, four and a half, five years. Oh, and then we have another number two here. We have another number two who barges in on the conversation. I always do. That's oh. We got Mr. Number two is not number one. I'm not a number two. I'm a probably a number twenty six or something. I don't. I won't know till later. I have to do a number two. (laughs) Okay, weird. Got back to the hotel. Oh, you did. You've been waiting to go number two for since we got tacos. Yeah, I didn't get to enjoy tacos with you guys. Good old Texas tacos. Okay, Mr. Mr. Jeff Bittner, who is number two. What was what did you win number two in? Imperial mustache. So how proud are you of yourself right now? Or am I more proud of you than you are of yourself? Um maybe you're more proud of me. I'm still trying to like like process all of this because I I still don't believe that it happened. You know that I yeah. I'm number two, number two is right here. I'm like, I'm like in heaven right now. It's and, like and, and Jeff was in a stacked category. Uh, I think every category so far has been stacked, except well, Fu Manchu was three of them, yeah. <laughs> but all three of them had won a Worlds in previous years. So I guess that was still stacked. I know, and technically, we had Sean on our podcast real quick here. He walked, he walked by. So technically, he was on the podcast. So I had a number one and two number twos and a twenty nine. But I, I, I'm, I'm not giving myself enough credit because I probably, hopefully, scored better than the twenty nine out of thirty two guys. But if I scored thirty two, I'm completely happy with it because the experience I had here this weekend was the biggest payout I could have possibly had. So coming into this weekend, both of you guys. I'm, I'm sure you weren't expecting to, well, you, I, I look at, I look at, <laughs> I look at these chops and I'm like, how could you not expect to do something great with that? And I, and I look at Jeff's mustache and how could you not expect to do something great with that? But when you were coming into this entire weekend, what were you expecting or not expecting? Well, I was kind of expecting, I was hoping that uh, a lot of, a lot of people would show up. And that's exactly what happened. They had over 700 competitors. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean. The exact I'm, number was 743,642. Okay, Crystal. Okay, Crystal. <laughs> Numbers are a little off. But, but uh, no, yeah, I was I was really pleased with everyone that did come out. Uh, every Like I said, just about every category so far has uh, been a lot of people in it. And it's been fun, you know. Um I, but how were your feelings about your category? Like, oh yeah, I I, I felt like it could have gone anyway, you know. And I said it, you know, before, is it, you know, it it could have gone anyway. I I I could have lost completely, you know, like I did. 
No. No, quit rubbing it oh, in. No, no, you no, laughed. No, you no, laughed. No, 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 no. You totally laughed right there. You were, that was like the foot in the head well, right there. I was, on thinking, the, I was thinking, I was like, well, I, I, it, I couldn't have been thinking you're a loser. I couldn't have thought 32 because there wasn't 32 people in my category, but you know. How many were? I don't know exactly. 600, I thought. I, 600 that, million, 342. I, thousand you know yeah we're not good with numbers on the beard caster podcast no um but uh yeah i i I mean like i said they uh steven casper when he got called up for third he you know he has very uh uh, his much smaller chops than but uh, they're very clean and so maybe i I was at that point i was thinking maybe you should wash more (laughs) no i was thinking the word you use is clean well i was thinking that you know (laughs) Uh, I was thinking that maybe they'd go with the the smaller chops, uh, and and not go with the bigger ones and, like and pork the, pork chops. Yeah, yeah, very Apple small sauce. ones, very small ones, and <laughs> uh, there was some, there was still some really good ones in there, and so uh, then they of course called me, and so I was happy at that point. Might I ask, did you pee a little bit? I got did I got a little, little bit. Choked up. I got choked up because, uh, like I said, you know, when but I yet you did not cry like Amy. No, I did not throw the waterworks <laughs> out like that. But uh, no, nah, it was it was uh, it was a shocker because uh, this has been a long time coming. Because I'm, because growing something like this doesn't take two days. No, uh, I've seen two worlds so far on video. You know, what was the other one? Was it Mars? Mars. You have seen two worlds? Oh, uh, that was a wah, fucking bad. Wah, wah. But you didn't get it, so you're. Yeah, I knew I was a loser on that one. <laughs> so, and this guy, this guy, man. Let's, let's go to Bittner now. Because this. What was the question again? Uh, uh, what were you expecting from what, uh, like, your category? Would yeah, you, like, you, when you. You were going to place? Did you think that you were going to be, like, last? Yeah, did, did you feel like when you came here, like, hey, I'm just going to come for the experience, or I felt like I actually had a chance to, to do something? And I mean, I know you had a lot of guys in your category. Did you, when you got up there and you see all your competitors, did you feel confident that, yeah, maybe I might do something? Or was it like, eh, I'm just here for the good time? Um, it, it was, it was a really tough competition. I mean, all of the, all the mustaches were like, anyone could have won any competition somewhere. That's what they were like. So someone could have won in Jerusalem. Of course, yeah. Religion. Did he not say somewhere? Yes, he did say somewhere. But I knew what he meant. I knew what he meant. Hey, I need to put a new tag on the beginning of my podcast. Like, this is the literal podcast. I take everything literally. So anytime you say something, I tend to go with the literal. But, you know, go on. Yeah. But I really just wanted to meet all the people. Like, Do you mean M-E-A-T? <laughs> hmm. M E E T. Well, meet. You wanted to like become friends with them and like yeah. talk with them, not eat them. True. True. Right, yeah. Job. I'm not a. Uh, yeah. I'm cannibal. Not a cannibal. Um. At least, all, as far as we know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He hasn't asked us to stay in his room. <laughs> there has been a couple <laughs> guys missing. <laughs> Just <me> Buffalo Bittner. <laughs> there was seven people in my category missing. So. Uh. Yeah, I ate them. <laughs> so, I did find and a, and you, you just got that on the podcast. So. I did find a yeah. good amount of uh, barbecue in his room. So, <laughs> but anyway, continue. Okay, continue on. So, again, where was I? You're in uh, Austin. <laughs> You're in Austin. That's true. Literal, with Captain literal. literal. Yeah, with Captain Literal. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so you know all the people that you know you've heard about or see on Facebook or Instagram. They were all there. Like we had this guy from Russia, you know, who had, he's the one that came in third and he could have won. And, you know, he, he, he had an amazing mustache, um, you know, and, and pretty much, you know, everybody was like really just perfect with their, with their styling, you know? And I, I just, I just thought I'd just have a fun experience. And if I, if I get some sort of placement, I would feel just, extremely privileged and lucky and and it happened and i I even got a little verklempt up there (laughs) that's a perfect word i use that verklempt i was trying to use that one on uh jody yesterday because i was like did you feel a little verklempt up there when you were you know competing and she kind of looked at me funny but yeah that is a perfect word Mm -hmm. yeah 
I'm getting a clip now just talking about oh, it. Stop it. Stop it. Do you want to hit him? Or should yeah. I yeah. pour beer on him? Yeah. Wake him up. Get him I ready. Love this dude. I, you I know. Dude. You, I, I yelled this dude's name the entire time. You I, were making love? No. No. <laughs> we were. We were. I when he was on. When he, yeah. Well, you know. That stash, it's just so, so perfect, man. I, I, I adore it. I, I really do as a, as a fan. I'm a fan. Well, same with me. I mean, like you, you're one of those mustache guys that I've known about like for years, and I've it's always been two years. Shut up. Yeah, I'm talking. I know. I'm. You know me with my math. I'm talking like 23 years. I've been following you on Twitter. Yeah. Knowing that I was gonna grow a mustache. Knowing that you were gonna grow that mustache, that yeah, was gonna the, be. When you had the, the, the peach fuzz up there, you know. Mm-hmm. Back when he was yeah, in was high school. But. But. Anyways, I've always like loved your, and this is, I'm talking like before you and I were even acquaintances, but like, I've always like loved looking at your pictures and your mustache has always been on point. I've, your whole look is just magnificent and Hey, shut up. I'm complimenting you right now. And you just, you just want to go ruin it. Do you see what he did there? It's like walking down the street and he's like stepping on the back of my shoe. Flat tire. I'm kidding. You know, I'm fucking with you, man. You know, I love you. You're, I consider you one of the greatest mustaches guys out there right now. And I'm very proud that I can honestly say that you're one of my good friends now. I'm, you're, you're going to regret this, by the way. Why? Oh, what, which do you prefer? In and out burger? Are you an in and out burger guy? I had an in and out burger. Never ever. What about a water burger? Nope. But I did have a what a taco tonight. Yeah, I just ate my first In and Out burger, and apparently everyone like lost their shit when they found out it was my first In and Out burger. So they literally had to like stand on me and like force me to eat the burger and hold the microphone to my mouth so they could hear every single bite I made, and they wanted to know every single thought I had about this In and Out burger. It was really good. Maybe we should do that too tomorrow. I'll do that. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> it's it was good shit, but he's saying no in and out. You know what in and out means, right? In, in and then out out, uh, yeah. out below. Out, out your below. dupa. And, and, as and, my and grandma it, would say. And, and it's not it's not like a couple hours later, it's instant. Really? It's I, instant. I have it's, not it, shipped myself yet. They, they they are worse than tacos. <laughs> it's 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 like the great Why are they so good though? They're not good. I thought it disgusting. was very tasty. No, it wasn't. It's not. Oh, but you know better than me. You're in, you're a number two in the world. You yeah. can always hold that over everyone's head. Mm-hmm. Hey, I don't care what you say. I no matter. Hold it over one person, Steven. But you can hold it over everyone's head. It's like, no, hey, no, no, no. I don't care. I want to rent this video. I'm number and, two and, in the world. And then Michael can say, well, I'm number one. So I, I just like yeah. Yeah, but you got to go over to the other side of the pond for that, which may happen next year. What's going on next year? Well, they're going to be doing their nationals next year over in England. Oh, so. I hear they have a clock there called Big Ben. I don't know. I saw it on the internet. It was in a movie once. Was a it? St- Steven Seagal movie, I think. Ooh. Or Bruce Willis. I'm not sure. They so, so I, might, I, might, I might make a little trip over to England and uh, compete in their nationals. You want to take him down on his own turf? I'm not saying I want to take him down his own turf, but it's it's possible. Can I go with I you? Got invited. Oh, you got invited. Oh. Hey, man, can I, I go with you? Oh, uh, you paying? I could be no. Well, no. <laughs> I I said I want to go with you. You you can pay for your own way, and then I'll <laughs> I'll go with you. I'll be your own personal correspondent. I'll be walking around with you the microphone like this whole time. What are you thinking right now? You're really close to my face. I know. Personal space. Yeah, personal space. Your invasion of personal space. That would not make good anything for anyone. It, it, it can happen, and it, it would be it would be completely camaraderie. And because uh, he mentioned the uh, the other day that you know he he doesn't like an empty win, and and that kind of thing. And I, I don't want him I don't want him just to sweep it over there in nationals. So, so I'm you don't think any for his money. You don't think anyone in a friendly in a friendly way. So you don't think anyone in Europe has anything on him? Not that I've seen. Well, you're number two in the world, so 
<laughs> well, I mean, you know, so yeah. And who's your number one in the world? Number one in the world that beat you, uh, Jackie Lynn Ellison. Oh, okay, sorry. I can't even go. I can't even say, hey, well, you know, maybe if you're going to go on his turf and you're going to compete against him, you're going to beat him. Uh, this one I might believe, but that one, Jackie's Jackie's mustache is pretty fucking insane. Uh, it's inspiring. Oh, that is, yeah, that is a good another I word for that, and not insane, but inspiring. Mm-hmm. Hey, oh, we're losing you already. Another beer, and I, I got. We're gonna go. be right here. All right, grabbing. We're taking a time off for beer breaks. My taco's coming out though, pretty soon. Oh, oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, oh. It's like turtle head. Oh. Jesus, this is this is not the way I wanted everything to go tonight. But yeah, hey, I just kind of walked into this conversation, so I know, but it was perfect because I was talking to the two number twos. Right, and I'm about to do another number, and that both probably have to do number twos. So how this is like ironic, like that Alanis Morissette song that this was part of this was in the the uh, remix version of it that didn't make it to the radio. Yeah, it's like I don't know, everything in that in that song is like not actually ironic, but it is. But OK, go poop. We'll talk to you, Mr. Bittner at a later date. Thank you. And cut. Thank you guys so much for uh, checking that out. Hope you got a couple good laughs out of it. As I relived the whole moment, it was a really funny, funny night. And uh, I'd like to thank Brad Jackson again for the in and out experience that I had. And I'm sorry that uh, everyone was picking on you and said you don't have a butt. Uh, I don't remember looking through the window to see if you had a butt or not. So uh, your secret is safe with me. But uh, thank you to everyone else. Thank you, Quinn, so much. Can't wait to hook up with you. Thanks, Jeff. And thanks, Crystal. And everyone that was uh, there that night and everyone that was at the Super 8 that whole entire weekend, thank you for the great memories. And, you know, one thing I do pull away from 2018 is really how much Austin, the Austin competition really changed my life and really, I I really can't explain it, but I, I know a lot of other people can attest to the feeling that you got when you were there and when you left and Anytime you go to a competition from here on out, it's like a whole new world has been opened up and all these new friendships and just all these great people that, you know, you knew were out there, but you met them and then you grew to become friends with them. And I would not have any of that unless it was for my beard. And I I would have never thought that all the years ago when I started growing my beard from you know, my early 20s till now my early 40s, all the years that I've had a beard that I would have never in a million years thought that my beard journey would have taken me to what it is now. And I'm just delighted. I'm thankful. Um, you know, just, I, I don't really know what to say, but I know a lot of you guys out there that are listening can, can kind of feel or understand that feeling I'm having right now. And even the, a lot of the new guys that, that have just started doing it and who are just re- relatively new to the bearding community, you have no idea what you guys are in for. You're in for the time of your life. Make sure you take advantage of every moment you get. Make sure you just take that time out of your night to talk to those people that are there. They're special people. Everyone is a special person that go to these events, who compete, who just come and watch. It's all for good causes. Everyone's great people. I don't even know what to say. I just feel like I sound like a broken record at this point. But thank you to everyone. And I want to thanks, uh, send a super awesome, special, extravagant thank you to everyone that's that's listened and downloaded to my podcast over this past year. I mean, it's just grown and grown and grown. It's ridiculous and i every week i when i check my numbers i can't believe that that you know i have over 200,000 million 482 and 16 uh fans it just really boggles my mind but once again i don't count very well so it could be just four and i know my mom and dad my my aunt and uncle you know they're they're good people and all but they they probably just download it that many times over and over and over and over again but to all those else, oh, everyone else out there who do listen, who do subscribe, who've checked out an episode, 
And, you know, hey, that wasn't for them. That's cool. You know, it's not for everyone. Not everyone gets what we do, but it's not just about what we do. It's about who we are. And you don't have to know about bearding or understand or even know the people I'm talking to. It's just, hey, man, it's two guys or two, a guy and a girl sitting down chatting about the fun things we get to do when we're together. And that's really kind of what it's about. It's the fun things we get to do. And it all ends up being for a good cause. So, But thank you to everyone who's checked out my podcast over the past couple years. Uh, I'm going into my third year right now uh, as 2018 turns the corner or 2017 turns the corner into 2018. But uh, I hope this year is going to be something super, something great. And I'm just going to only keep doing what I'm doing. And I hope you keep enjoying and, you know, give me some feedback, Scott at the beardcaster.com. That's all I can say. And I guess to tie up the loose ends, you know, go to the beardcaster.com and, you know, check out all my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Stitcher, or not Stitcher, Instagram, <laughs> but you can subscribe on Stitcher. You can also, like I said, new, 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 new Spotify, go to Spotify. If you want, you can uh, subscribe on Spotify. You can check me out on there. But uh, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, pretty much any podcast download app you can find me on. So make sure you go check it out. You know, leave me a review. Give me some stars, whatever, whatever you feel. I mean, tis the season, they say. Tis the season. So, you know, if you don't feel like doing that, you can tell a friend. Be like, hey, you know, I found this really cool podcast. It's it's called The Beardcaster. You got a beard, so you can go check it out. We can listen together and we can talk. You know, you could, I mean, if you talk like that, you can do it that way. Or if you don't talk that way, you can try to emulate that accent as you tell one of your great friends about the podcast. So, and if by some chance at the last minute you guys are like, oh my God, I need a Christmas gift, well, I'm going to give you a good hookup tonight. If you go to pulpobeardoils.com and you, any of that stuff you see on that story, add it to your cart. When you're checking out, you enter the beardcaster as a, your coupon code, you'll get 15% off. And that's my Merry Christmas gift to you. So go to Pulpo Beards or pulpobeardoil.com and enter promo code the Beardcaster to get your discount. So thank you, everyone. I'm going to try to get another episode out before Christmas. If not, I wish everyone a happy holiday, happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa, all the fun things that everyone celebrates out there. Um, everyone, enjoy your families. Number one, enjoy your families. And when you guys are on your travels, make sure you download an episode of The Beardcaster and you guys can all listen to it on your drive to go visit your in-laws and or on your way back. So, But thank you, everyone, again. We'll catch you soon. If not, have everyone have a great day. Christmas and a happy new year and we'll see you very 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 soon thank you all and ciao and lawyers, visionaries and voyeurs, take me with you, get me out of here.